Hi there guys, Phil Short here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a little while since I've done a tutorial or kind of lesson style video, so I thought I would do one on one of my favorite things to do, which is to just play over a blues. And I just want to share with you a couple of things that I enjoy doing playing over blues, some things that I've discovered recently, which are really cool, and some things that maybe might uh, help your playing feel a little bit more lyrical, uh, maybe uh, be a little bit more melodic. Um, and uh, yeah, just have a little bit more of that kind of stylistic um, authenticity about it. Something I'm a really big fan of is uh, taking one idea and seeing how far you can push it and get the most use out of it. So what we're going to do is uh, look at a couple of those ideas. And I also want to have a, a little look at uh, ways that we can kind of link the changes together as well so that we are kind of following the integrity of the chords um, and uh, we can open up ways to kind of help things feel a bit more lyrical, but maybe um, in a way that we can uh, move away from things sounding too kind of uh, practicey in the sense of, you know, it's really obvious that we're switching arpeggios or whatever. So some strategies of, as to like how we can think about that and things we can listen out for to help us with that. So we're going to do this in C, nice little fun thing in C. So we've got C7. <laughs> And then we've got uh, an F7, and then five will be G7. And really, we're just playing around those basic dominant seventh chords. I suppose you could uh, imply um, some extended chords if you wanted to. You could play it as a ninth on the fourth, and you could play a sharp nine for chord five if you like. And that'll kind of give it a particular sound. But really, we're just focusing on just that that kind of staple dominant seventh sound. Okay, so a really fun thing that we can do with the chords to begin with is think of ways of spicing up the sound of the chord progression itself. And this is really cool. So we're gonna start off with that C7. And I'm gonna uh, miss off the low notes because the bass player's got that bit down for me. So we're just gonna play the top part of the voicing that dominant seventh chord. And something you'll hear a lot in um, this kind of major blues thing would be this type of uh, voice leading idea. So kind of give you like a traditional gospel type vibe and a very kind of keyboard player thing to do as well. Sounds really cool and just helps give the um, chord progression a little bit of movement to it. Stops it from sounding so uh, stiff, which is cool. So I'll go through that again. So bounce onto that dominant seven, play chord four, then we're going to play this uh, diminished chord, go up chromatically, and then land on this next um, uh, inversion or voicing for a C7, I guess so. You've got these two different versions. Okay, so that's the first thing that we can do. And then that will set us up really nicely to move into chord four. So we can go into an F9 or an F7 chord. And of course, you've got the typical ways that you can slide in. But we've got this additional voicing that we can use, seeing as we've landed up here. So we can play this inversion of the dominant chord. Okay, so that will just kind of uh, help things sound a little bit more lyrical, more melodic. Chords are a bit more together, so we'll have. And then we've got that nice tight voice leading the chromatic dominant seventh chord here. So we've got the um, sort of G flat going back down to the F. And then from there, we could of course go straight into a G7 chord here. Or we could move into that voicing, whatever kind of takes your fancy, really. Okay, so we've got these um, different voicings. Now, a really cool thing to do with your soloing and with your lead playing is you can kind of think of um, using those chord shapes as a way to hang your um, melodic ideas from. Um, you don't have to just uh, only think about scale patterns or that kind of thing. Obviously, we are going to use those. They're obviously very useful. Uh, but a really good thing to do is to kind of hang our melodies off the notes within those chords or the chord tones. 
and then we can use scale notes to kind of glue some of those things together to give us a bit more uh, rhythmical interest or kind of help things um, just run in a, in a smoother kind of way. And I'd encourage you to spend time um, just listening to that and slowly experimenting with finding uh, lines and things that sound interesting, things that you think, yeah, that sounds cool. I'm going to see if I can do that in several different places across the fretboard. So I'll show you a couple of things that I like to do, which help us to follow the chord changes and be aware of the chord changes and tracking those on the fretboard so we can kind of stay lyrical, but also maybe to do that in a more subtle way as well. So we can keep the integrity of our kind of melodic ideas sounding as smooth as possible. So over this chord one, over this C major chord, a really common thing to do in the major blues is draw out the sound of the major sixth in particular. So you'll often get this type of thing. Or that kind of lick. You know, um, the start of uh, Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry would do that exact thing. Okay, so nothing kind of new or, uh, you know, not uh, breaking any ground here with this stuff. But it gives it a really sweet kind of sound. It has a different flavor to maybe just playing minor pentatonic, which still sounds great. That still sounds really cool, and we're definitely going to use that. Because we've got this emphasis on the major six rather than on the flat seven, it's, it's just a slightly sweeter type of sound. Okay, so that's the first thing that we can do. Now we can bring out that major sixth sound in a less obvious place. So I'm going to jump to what you might refer to as position three of the C minor pentatonic or C blues position, if you like. Okay, up here. So there's my C. And I'm seeing all of those notes around that uh, C7 type shape here, okay? So you've, you've got your root and your major third and your flat seven, there's your root again. There would be your fifth. Okay, so you can get all those kinds of things using that shape. So a really nice fun thing to do is to revisualize your root position actually from the C here. So this is a bit like playing uh, C minor pentatonic position one. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in the major sixths. So I've got that lovely kind of tension of the minor third, which we could kind of think as being repurposed as the sharp nine, so it would be giving us like a C7 sharp nine, your Jimi Hendrix chord. So you could think of it as uh, playing the sharp nine as a, as a kind of altered extension, but it just sounds cool and that's the, the most important thing. So I've got that type of cap that I can play. Now I can repurpose that same phrase to accommodate the F7 when it comes around, and I can play the exact same piece of, of uh, information, which you would probably do naturally, intuitively anyway, I'm sure. Because those of you who are uh, keen eyed among you will note that we're now playing the flat seven, the fifth, and the, the major third of F. And then chromatically climbing up to the major second. So I'm kind of bringing out that dominant ninth sound with that little phrase. Now, when I bent up then, we kind of heard it resolve back to chord one. I'm moving that sharp nine interval over the C, back up to the major third. And I can, you know, extend that run out in any kind of further way. I can use a position shift like that. I could maybe play it in the same area. Give me a slightly different, uh, you know, uh, order of the notes, a uh, different flavor of it. 
Okay, so that's kind of a really cool thing. So I could take that little phrase and I could turn that into uh, a motif or an idea that I can uh, expand on and keep coming back to and it can help me to create like an arc and a story in my improvisation. <laughs> Okay, so that kind of thing. Maybe I could make it more obvious that I've gone to the F by bending up and resolving the line to the F. And then I can make it more obvious that I'm going back to chord one again. By resolving on that C. So a lot of these uh, kind of notes and licks and ideas, they all um, uh, kind of share harmonic information and of course you know we can use our ear and listen but it's also kind of helpful to be aware and, and to be able to see and visualize uh, where the crossover is and then that can allow you to make some really cool and interesting and smooth um, harmonic movements through the chords even through uh, through a basic blues chord progression like this one so we could take that same type of phrase idea again let's say in our solo we'd worked our way back down to position one of our C blues stuff. I could use that same phrase again to play over chord five. So there's my G7, here's a G, and then I got my sort of G minor pentatonic phrase here again. So I could think of that as the root, the sharp nine, and the major six. So I'm giving myself some G dominant kind of stuff. Now with the exception of, of this note, the B here, most of those notes We'll find those contained within our kind of C blues scale information that we've already got. But then, I, so I can then pull it back around into that kind of C7 type sound. So over the G. I can see that as playing. Uh, G stuff, G, the sharp nine, the six, over the four. I could just swap that down, so I'm playing the flat seven over the four. Playing the sus over the top there, so the sus four, or the 11, you can think of it that way. There's the nine. So I'm bringing out like an extended dominant 11 type sound over the top of the chord four. And then I just swap back to that major third again. Okay, so that's just like a number of ways you could start to explore and kind of think about it. So taking a little phrase, seeing how you could repurpose that little melody to do the same thing in various different places. So that's kind of really cool. Now the next thing that you could start to think about is, okay, well maybe I want to bring in a little bit more tension um, ideas. Now I didn't do this in the opening solo in the video, but this is a cool thing that I stumbled across. I'm just thinking of ideas that I could share. And uh, we could repurpose that same fingering for that kind of C dominant uh, kind of sound. To give us that type of thing. Instead of playing the, uh, the C on our first finger, I'm gonna play the C on my fourth finger and play this uh, same lick, but in this area of the fretboard. And this will give me kind of like a, a Lydian dominant type thing. Kind of like 
like a, an outside altered type sound. So what I've got now is uh, the sharp 11 or the sharp 4 resolving onto that uh, uh, major 6th interval. So a nice interesting sound. And then I'm kind of going from the root up to the flat 9 onto the major 3rd. So I'm kind of getting inside notes, some kind of outside altered tensions but resolving nicely onto strong chord tones. And then again here, I'm kind of bringing out intentionally that Lydian dominant type sound. So I've got the sharp four and the root and the flat seven. But then I could kind of see myself just dropping back into regular kind of uh, C blues pentatonic type stuff. Anyway, so that's just one example of uh, something that you could potentially explore. So you could take a phrase or maybe a lick that you're really bored of, maybe try and find some different places where the same fingering will work and uh, you know, re-engineer uh, why that sounds cool and how you can handle the tension and release into the next chord. So it's, it's a fun and good thing to try and do that across the whole fretboard. And a really important thing that's going to help you do that is to be able to Kind of switch your um, visualization, I guess, of where you're seeing the chords at any one time. So it's just helpful to kind of see things from a slightly different perspective. Uh, even if you're drawing on the same muscle memory of something, it can just help you be intentional with like landing things as well. So for me, the way I kind of think about it is there's like a, a like a mix of following my intuition, following my gut, and then kind of having an awareness of where that harmony is on the fretboard so that if I feel like I'm kind of getting lost I can see a, a safe escape route so I kind of don't play anything that would um, surprise me or kind of sound bad I suppose. So that's what I'm kind of trying to do with it. So there's that kind of thing and then the other thing that you could also try and do is um, flip your ideas around as well so give yourself a little bit more um, uh, bang for buck. So here's a really cool exercise that you could try. So we could take this uh, phrase and we could displace one of the notes. So imagine all those notes were like on a wheel like this rather than starting at the beginning and going all the way around to the last one we're gonna kind of turn the wheel around so that now we start on the second note and then the last note we'll play would be what was the first note. So we would do this. So the first lick would be this. Then we're going to move that note and play it at the end. So now we'll get this. And then we could do that uh, maybe another time as well. So we could go. Those are just some uh, little ideas I wanted to share, some little thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Uh, let me know in the comments if you liked any of those and if there are other things that uh, you think would be cool to see on this channel. Really appreciate all of you subscribing and for your support. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you do hit that uh, like and subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content. And I'll see you guys next time.